Good evening, everyone. My name is Scott Learn, and I'm running for Multnomah County Auditor for three reasons. Number one is I really believe in the power of performance auditing. I've seen it firsthand where I'm an auditor at the state. I've worked on audits involving the welfare system, the foster care system, alternative schools, and now high poverty schools at Portland Public Schools. And those audits have made a significant difference. The second reason I'm running is for the last decade, the Multnomah County Audit Office is not focused on the services that matter most. Um, that includes physical health care, mental health care, the jails, the DA's office, social services, and I want to change that. And the third and final reason is I believe I have the experience to make that change. Um, in addition to my experience at the state, I was a financial auditor um, at Price Waterhouse in San Francisco, and I've been a reporter for was a reporter for 23 years, including 17 in this county. Thank you for coming. Appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. And Jennifer, your opening. My name is Jennifer McGuirk, and I'm running for Multnomah County Auditor. I really appreciate all of you coming out tonight to learn about this important role. I'm running to continue our office's tradition of supporting accountable, transparent government and to bring a new needed focus on equity and community engagement in the auditor's work. The core of the county is to provide social services, health, and public safety. And so I will prioritize those programs that directly impact people's health and safety. Let me give you an example of what I'll look at. Back in 2015, there was an audit done internally in the sheriff's office that found disproportionate use of force against people of color in our jails. Disability Rights Oregon has also come out with a report showing deplorable conditions in our jails for people with mental health issues. In one case, a man pulled out one of his own teeth. How do we prevent these things from happening and how do we care for the most vulnerable in our community? I think we need to stand up for them. Auditing is how I stand up and I hope you will stand up by voting for me. Thank you. What are your top priorities for areas that should be audited? Are these in or missing from the county's current audit plan? Yeah. So my, in, in a broad sense, my three top priorities are mental health, because it ties to <clears throat> so many of our problems, mental health care availability of it. The second is just the justice system broadly. Multnomah County is the largest um, provider <clears throat> of justice system services. Um, and then housing and homelessness. So within that, I have ideas, specific ideas I'd like to tackle first in all of those areas. Um, just for example, in, for mental health, I would like to explore the services, mental health services that the county provides in the schools. Um, I've heard a lot of concerns from teachers about the level of access to those services. <clears throat> I think there's some bureaucratic obstacles. And I think that'll also get us out into the schools, um, including in, in East County, so we can really see some of the trends that are happening. Schools are a wonderful place to see what's happening in society. And Jennifer, your top priorities? Sure. So when I launched my campaign in July 2017, I did so with three audit priorities that have con been consistent throughout that time. First, as I described in my opening remarks, I'm concerned about conditions in our jails, and I'd like to look at the conditions going on there. This would be the first of a series of audits to look at our justice system. Secondly, I'd like to look at what's going on with housing and homeless services from the perspective of those who are trying to access services. Uh, we're spending more than $50 million on this each year. We need to know what kind of outcomes we're getting for our money. And third, I'd like to look at what's going on in our adult care homes for seniors and people with disabilities. We've heard reports that the state database of conditions in those homes has left out a lot of uh, big problems. We should know what's going on in them. There's over 600 that contract with the county, and I'd like to look into that as well. Okay, both of you have plans, and um, things happen. What would cause you to change your audit schedule of priorities? Jennifer, start us. I don't know that I would change my priorities. I've left room in there to include new ideas that I hear from the community. Right now, the top issues I'm hearing about are related to housing and homelessness, but I've also heard about people's concerns about how the opioid epidemic is affecting county pressure on county services, so that could be an area to look at. When pressing issues come up, we also have other avenues for looking into them, such as doing complaint-driven investigations, and uh, also, 
me making sure that I know what's going on in the county so that I can talk with uh, the leadership, the county commissioners, and make sure they're looking into issues quickly. I'll do that by having an organizational ombudsman who will be another avenue for employees to report concerns about issues going on in our county, such as what was happening in the Unity Center, and also to report discrimination and harassment they're facing so that we can do quick investigations into those issues and not uh, uh, disrupt our audit schedule. And Scott? Yeah, two things. One is I want to be careful I'd be coming in as an outsider and I want to hear what every, the staff of the county audit office have to say. I want to hear what their priorities are. I want to hear their arguments for it. Um, and I want to make sure that we're going after the best audit that's out there. Um, the second thing is I think the auditor needs to be much more of a troubleshooter. And I think that's a duty that I can take on well, given my experience as a reporter. Um, for example, when the Unity uh, Emergency Psychiatric Center had a lot of problems, um, the whistleblower um, was reporting that to the auditor, and as far as I know, the auditor didn't follow up on that or do anything about it. That's going to change if I'm elected. I think the auditor has responsibility, especially when something is as critical to life and safety, to follow up on that and make sure policies are being followed. I think if he had done that, it could have averted a lot of the problems there. I think he would have identified that. Some of the problems Multnomah County was hearing about and thinking they didn't have jurisdiction over should be reported to the state, and that would have cut off a lot of problems at the, at the pass. Okay, we turn now to the closings, and Scott, you'll start us off, please. All right. Thank you very much. I want to close with three promises. Um, promise one, if I'm elected, the county auditor will return to focusing on the services that matter most. We will dig deep to improve those services re regardless of opposition. Promise two, I will bring an independent outside perspective to the job. Our office will be the eyes and ears of the public, taxpayers and county clients. We will be impatient with business as usual. And promise number three, I will be devoted to the job. I'm 55 years old now and I have a long track record. But the skill I value most is the ability to listen to others, whether it's insiders, outsiders, critics, or advocates who have great ideas about improving government. I promise to bring that devotion to the job every day. So thanks so much to all of you for coming, and thanks to the League and the City Club for having us. Um, if you have any tips, please give me an email or a call, and also please vote for me. Thanks. Jennifer? I want to thank you all again for spending some of your evening here to uh, learn and, and talk about auditing. Uh, I want to thank the City Club and the League for sponsoring this event. Uh, one of the rare treats of having a competitive race is that we get to talk with people about auditing and make sure people know that they have an elected auditor. If you vote for me, please know that this will not be the last conversation I have with you. I've been holding coffees around the county. This Saturday I'll be in Rockwood. Uh, and I will continue to do that if elected because I want you to know that you can hold me accountable, that I will always uh, follow the facts and report back to you on what's happening, and that I want your ideas and to have you be a part of the conversation so that you can work with me to create the change we need in our government. Uh, I appreciate your consideration, and I hope you all will vote. Thank you. And thank both of you. And thanks also to the City Club for partnering with us, for Metro East Community Media for recording, and for all the volunteers helping behind the scenes. Please check our website, lwvpdx.org, to view all our forums and for TV replay information. For more information, pick up our nonpartisan voters guide at your local public library, at New Seasons Market, or Meals on Wheels Dining Center and in the back of the room for people who are in the room. Also, you can go to vote411.org to see how your ballot might look. Election day is November 6th. As in all Oregon elections, you will receive a mail-in ballot if you don't check with the county to make sure that your registration is current. Ballots must be mailed back early or delivered to an official drop-off site anywhere in Oregon no later than 3 p.m. on Tuesday, November 6th. Postmarks themselves do not count. Thank you for watching, audience. Thank you for being here. Please be informed and remember that your vote is very important. Do all you can to make sure that your friends, neighbors, family also vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.